It is a university classroom, highly recognizable to the audience, but a little more depressing than usual. Probably in a basement, maybe no windows to the outside, plenty of those annoying desk, chair, formica, chewing gum units, podiums, or equivalent. A projector, or maybe not. Almost certainly a whiteboard with an eraser, but of course, no pen. Nobody is there. A clock is in prominence. It shows 20 minutes to two. It is the first day of the winter term. Tom, a first year student, tired and with a heavy backpack, enters through the door. He looks around and turns on the lights. He takes in the room and with absolutely no constraint, chooses a desk at random in the middle and sits down. He tries to lean his backpack against the leg of the desk. It slides to the floor with a clunk. He stands it back up again. There is a thud as April tries to open the door, but encounters some sort of difficulty. There is a series of dramatic bangs and crashes before she finally gets the door open and enters. She is also a first year, exhausted, hair disorderly, heavy backpack. She looks at Tom, but doesn't think very much about him. She chooses the desk, apparently at random, careful to not choose one too close to him, but not so far away that he would notice. She tries to lean her back against the leg of the desk. Music 104? I hope so. Abruptly, April's backpack slides to the floor with a clunk. She stands it up again. Stupid thing. That happened to me too. What? My backpack fell over too. Then I stood it up again. It's a metaphor for how my day is going. It's a metaphor for how my life is going. <laughs> What happened to you outside the door? I uh, didn't turn the handle far enough. And then it uh, tried to eat you? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I like your shirt. <laughs> Thanks. It's, uh, it's from Metallica. I know. I saw them when they were here. Oh, me too. Wasn't it awesome? Loved it. I'm. April, by the way. Tom. Pleased to meet you. April like the month? Uh, yes. Actually, April's my middle name. My given name is Theodora. Oh. <laughs> uh, so what are you studying? Astrophysics. Jesus. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sorry. It sounds hard. I'm not going to lie. It is. So why take it? Wait, sir, you don't have to answer that. That's too personal. It's just nothing's ever sparked my imagination the way that space does. That's a good reason. So, what about you, genius? Open studies. There's no reason to say open studies in that tone like you're embarrassed by it. Well, I am, a little. Well, you shouldn't be. If open studies was the right choice for you, then you don't have to defend it to anyone. Well, my mom was disappointed. She can go fuck herself. I am so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, it, it was funny. I'm I laughed. I'm still sorry. Well, well, you shouldn't be. But why, though? Why, why to pick open study? Uh, yeah. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to find my passion. Any luck? Uh, not, not so far. It's only the start of the second term. I guess. You're in first year? Yeah. Uh, you? I am. Why are you taking music if you're in astrophysics? I'm a girl with many interests. No, I mean seriously. Uh, we have option credits. Oh. I wasn't kidding about being interested in music, though. Good. Sometimes when it's really late, and I'm doing homework, and 
looking at star charts, and then I'm on my second energy drink because it's all due tomorrow. <laughs> I start to wonder if light is a kind of music and the earth as it gets bombarded by an uncountable number of photons every second from a trillion stars and galaxies is sitting at the front row seat of the ultimate concert. So you enrolled in this class because of a late night sugar high? <laughs> it's not as stupid as it sounds. I'm not trying to be the girl from Contact or anything, but uh, if I'm smart enough, maybe I can take some kind of theory away from this class and then apply it to cosmic background radiation and find something that no one's ever found before. Maybe aliens are broadcasting their greatest, greatest music to the stars for all to hear, if only we knew how to listen. And do you think they are? No. Because we don't. That's one of the things that annoys me so much about the search for alien intelligence. We don't go blasting our existence into space, so why should aliens? The patterns that we look for in rapid radio bursts and strange signals from deep space aren't the patterns that we transmit into deep space. We send out all kinds of signals, you know, radar and stuff, but when we pick up things that are similar to the stuff that we do send, we don't assume they're anything important. Huh. Yeah, so I think we have found intelligent life. We just haven't figured out how to know it. I can't imagine what it'd be like to be the guy or, or girl who figures that out. I know. Imagine looking at a message and realizing it's the first thing anyone ever read that wasn't written by a human. You shouldn't worry, you know. Uh, you are smart enough. Huh? Before, you said if you were smart enough, you would do that thing with the music. Oh, yeah. You're not convinced? Turns out it's a lot easier to fantasize about you know, sitting in a field under a radio dish than it is to do uh, this. She comes up with a beaten up binder, which she opens, showing Tom pages upon pages of messy calculations and figures and scribbles and self-drawn diagrams of stars and galaxies. Holy shit. Thanks. The backpack slides to the floor with a clap. She's down it up again. Well, at least we proved that you're smarter than me. I... I will take that as a compliment. The clock on the wall now shows 10 minutes to two. Where is everybody? Are, are we in the wrong room? I don't think so. I triple checked. Um, yep, 191. That is where we are, isn't it? Uh, at the same time, they both stand up to go check. Tom lets April do it while he just stands at the desk and checks his own class schedule. She leaves the room, letting the door close behind her. It takes her less than a second to check the number on the door, but has to kick and bang at it several times to get back in. I don't think this door likes me. It was very civil to me. You had 191 too? Definitely. Well, maybe it's a small class. Being an open study means you get to take whatever you want. Does that appeal to you? I'm at this weird point in my life where I'm interested in everything. I like that. And you? Well, you're asking the guy in open <laughs> studies. Touche. I, I guess it does mean that I can explore a little more. And you can spend time learning about things that there aren't even classes for. The clock shows something like five minutes before two. If they're in the wrong room, they need to figure out where they need to be very soon. Uh, like what? I don't know, the Cicada 3301 puzzles play? The which? Oh, it, it's an unsolved internet mystery. But these weird puzzles and cryptograms that popped up on Reddit and 4chan a few years ago. <laughs> da Vinci Code stuff, you know, you, you get this image of a duck which when you put it through a special piece of software, turns it into a link. 
which leads you through a mysterious subreddit full of Mayan numbers and no content to a book called The Mabinogion, which uses a code from the duck image to reveal a phone number, which you call and hear, <clears throat> hello, there are three prime numbers associated with the final .jpg image. 3301 is one of them. You'll need to find the other two. Multiply them together, put the dot com at the end to proceed to the next step. Illuminati confirmed. Exactly. Your memory's good. No, thanks. I did some reading on it over Christmas. Not the sort of thing you'd learn in class, is it? No. Oh, can you imagine? <clears throat> oh, I see what's happening here. All right, class. Yeah. Listen up. Today we are going to be talking about the Cicada 3301 puzzle, because uh, it's part of the Cicada uh, story that I can do without notes. Professor, what class is this? This is encryption and cryptography for the digital age. But sir, why is my syllabus just a bunch of gibberish? It's a cipher. You know. You'll need to decrypt it to figure out when the final exam is. <laughs> that seems rather harsh. We're all working together now. I expect you to all pull your weight. Now, 3301. In 2012, on the random board on 4chan. <laughs> uh, do you think you'd ever go into something like that? Cryptography or criminology or computer science? Well, I'm not smart enough for computer science. Bullshit. Science. What? Wait, what? I, I just think that you'd totally be smart enough for computer science. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, you were saying? I was gonna say maybe. I mean, mm. maybe. Uh, I mean, maybe. But I'm not sure it's gonna be all it's cracked up to be. You don't really get to be an expert in anything. Hmm, meh. Being an expert's not all it's cracked up to be. You should see some of my professors, leading experts in stellar physics, in quantum energy and whatever, but they have no idea what's going on. You ask them a question, and they're just like, well, you know, if strange matter is confirmed. Strange matter? You know, neutron star? No. <laughs> well, then it's hard for me to explain the mystical, beautiful insanity that is matter under that much pressure. Basically, inside a neutron star, there's these thing, things that are being squeezed so hard with so much pressure that it's possible that atoms dissolve into even smaller particles called quarks. And then it's possible that those quarks become spe something special called strange. And strange quarks don't need unfathomable pressure to exist, which means if they somehow got out, like uh, if the star exploded, they would still exist. The thing is, strange matter, it's perfect. Perfectly strong and dense, no need for atoms or electrons or chemical bonds anymore. Everybody can be strange matter. That would have made high school chemistry uh, easier to pass. Well, exactly. And basically, that's what other atoms think too. And so it's entirely possible that if a little piece of strange matter were to hit some regular matter, say a planet, all that matter would go like, wow, that's so cool. And uh, it would become strange matter too, setting off a chain reaction that would end up with everything becoming strange matter. Huh. Well, but since that hasn't already happened already, don't worry too much yet. <laughs> you see, this is exactly what I'm talking about with open study. Well, I mean, that's not expertise. That's particle physics. I only sort of picked that up from hanging out with a couple of my roommate's friends. One of them wanted to practice a presentation he was going to be making the next day. Oh. So what you're saying is that the entire world is open studies if you're paying attention. Hmm. That's, that's profound. And a little disappointing for me. The clock on the wall now shows five minutes past two. We must be in the wrong room. Well, if that's true, then how did everybody else find the right room? That's a fair point. Maybe it's just the two of us in the class. Even then, where's the professor? Maybe lost? 
Or maybe she is such a music lover that she's completely fallen in love with Harry Styles' his new album. Well, that wouldn't make her a music lover, but bear with me. Okay. okay so she's sitting on the bus. Delirious at joy at these soothing boy band tones. And then she misses her stop, but she doesn't even notice. She's so wrapped up, head back, eyes closed, that she doesn't even remember she's on a bus. She goes around the entire route again, and she misses her stop and doesn't think about it. Okay, and finally, it's 3 a.m., and the bus driver parks the bus at the end of the day, last stop. He comes to wake her up and tell her to get off, but he doesn't find a professor anymore. He finds a drooling, moaning heap, who, when he shakes it roughly, only gurgles like a zombie until it finally chokes out. Stop, you'll cry, and it's the sign of the time. No, that's not from his new album. We got, wait, wait. Got me? <laughs> I can't believe you like Harry Styles. Okay, hey, listen, man, it's not like I'm a crazy fan or well, anything. Well, no, it's, it's like it's fine. Uh, it's but... not like he's Justin Bieber. True. What's your problem with him? <clears throat> Stop your crying, it's a sign of the time. <laughs> okay, that was pretty accurate. But, look how shiny! How is there a sea breeze blowing through his hair while he's on stage? Hmm. That's the power of styles. I still wouldn't get all excited and stop breathing whenever he comes up. You would too if you were a straight woman. That's hard to deny. <laughs> I mean, seeing as we'll never know. <laughs> Where, where'd you get into Harry Styles? Um, that's a personal question. But never mind. I had a friend in high school who liked him a lot. <laughs> Oh, my high school friends were into D&D. &D. Not music, though. I, I love D&D. &D. Oh, well, where'd you used to play? My brother ran a game for his friend's school. Still runs, actually. I was Lord Durian Brax, Exarch of Hal, and Defending Angel of the Crow's Reproach. Damn. He was super masculine. For some reason, I found that really appealing when I was 15. Sure. That's weird. I mean, I was a bit of a tomboy, but I never really worry about No, no. I think, I think that's pretty normal. I know I explored my feminine side when I was that age. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was Sophie de la Poignere, <laughs> cleric of the northern wastes, with a sensitive and soft-spoken healer of the sick and downtrodden. Well, you are very sensitive. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, come to think of it, I don't think it's about being straight. I think it's just natural for a certain type of person. What? Uh, uh, girls who asphyxiate when someone like uh, Justin Bieber or Harry Styles comes out on stage. Just why? Like, I, I like Harry Styles. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. Well, I'm a little ashamed to admit it, but he's not that great. Do people really asphyxiate at those concerts? I read a thing on the internet. <laughs> right. Well, you can picture the scene, right? <laughs> yes, I can. She's waiting. She hasn't eaten all day because she thinks it'll make her fat. Oh, nope, I got surprisingly dark and quickly. <laughs> She's delirious. She's waiting for Justin to appear. She sees his foot break through the curtain. She takes a gasp of air and her brain starts shutting down due to the sheer degree with which oxygen ex exceeds IQ points. Okay. And then along with the roar of the crowd, she screams with ecstasy and just collapses. She hits the floor, eyes rolling. For someone having a medical emergency, Surprisingly obnoxious. Yeah, it really is. If, if one must pass out, like, can 
everyone do it quietly instead of like at the end of a drawn out piercing scream? And no one notices, because they're all too busy screaming at Justin. Oh, rip. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. How did we get on this topic? I believe I was making fun of our would-be professor. Yes. Well, this class is going to be a time if that's what's teaching us. Well, we have no reason to assume that, so... Oh, oh, I had this dream the other night. Well, yeah, I had this dream the other night where there was this super quiet girl that I was friends with in high school, but we sort of fell out. Uh, was this girl real or in the dream? Oh, no. She was real. Her name was Holly. Oh, yes? But we were having this, like, super earnest conversation where she was like, thanks for putting up with me all year. Because in our last year of high school, we did have like all our classes together. And I was like, oh, come on, you're my friend. So then we hugged, and then she said, I started to feel connected with you a long time ago. But I couldn't figure out how to tell you. And, and I said, I know. And she hugged me, and she said, thanks. I, I, it didn't even make sense in the context of our relationship, but I woke up like, so wishing that that conversation had really happened. And I'm sorry, I, I've forgotten why I'm telling you this. It, it, it made sense at one point. You had a crush on this girl? In a way. I guess it's never that simple, is it? But what happened to her? Uh, Holly. Uh, never mind. <laughs> the clock on the wall now shows between 15 and 20 minutes past two. Okay, is this class happening or not? I would say very much not. We need to figure out what's going on. Maybe they emailed us? I, I already checked. There's no signal in here. Did you notice? I did not. Damn, you're right. I'm gonna go see if I can pick it up in the hall. Do you think maybe everybody else just uh, skipped? I can't imagine skipping class intentionally. I feel sick in my stomach for weeks. He exits to the hall. What I was gonna say. April opens her backpack and starts digging around, pulling out a chocolate bar. She unwraps the top part and takes an enormous bite. Her backpack slides to the floor with a clunk. She stands it up again. Tom attempts to re-enter at this point, but finds that his easy entrance at the top of the show was a mere fluke. He bangs and fights with the door for several seconds, and by the time he bursts in, he's still in time to catch April with her cheeks still bulging with chocolate. April holds out the chocolate bar with a bite taken out of it, offering it to Tom. He takes it, breaks off a piece for himself, and he hands the rest back to her. Uh, any uh, luck getting with uh, getting signal? Oversharing professors. No kidding. Gack from both ends? That's. Ugh. Ah. So now what? Uh, I guess there's no point in staying here any longer. But sure there is. What? I mean, do you want to? We've been having a, a nice conversation. I, I don't have another class today. something? Sure. I'm scared to admit 
upset. I agree we're having a nice conversation. I feel like as soon as I admit that we're friends, because we are friends, I feel like society floats this big balloon at me asking me, are you? Are you just friends? Or is there more? You know, as soon as I'm here because I want to be, this just all becomes so much harder. I'm not scared of this. I'm scared of what happens when we take this out there. I feel like, I feel like, in, I'm in the moment, in the end of the Spider-Verse, when they all come up to each other in the lair and they say, you, you're like me. Uh, it actually happens first when Peter Parker meets Miles in the collider. Well, this is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like you. I'm just not sure how much I am like you. Well, I think we're pretty similar. Sorry. Uh, don't be sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Okay. It's been a long, weird day. It has. Uh, I'm talking to somebody who I only met 45 minutes ago, and look how personal we're getting. And yet, here we are. I'm not sure I've ever heard someone say, we are friends, in a tone that like, definitive before. For me, it, it always waits until someone randomly introduces me as their friend, and then I'm like, oh good, I didn't drastically misunderstand our relationship. <laughs> I mean, how long does it really take to know you're friends with someone? I mean, once you look past all the fear, then once you know, why not be clear about it? I agree. So, what do you think this class will be like? <laughs> I don't know, I was hoping to find out today. Think there'll be papers? Yeah, maybe. Probably a midterm and a final. Trigger, common knowledge. Open book quizzes. Forum discussions. Class feedback. Journals. Oh, fuck! Uh, the stuff like this like scares the crap out of me. Me too. I don't know why. It's like it's not rational or anything. It's like when I'm scared. When I go to sleep, I'm when I'm scared. When I go to sleep, that I won't wake up like at the right time the next day. That I won't go to sleep and I'll be like too tired to function. Or maybe I won't wake up. Like who would come for me then? <laughs> who would worry about me? Yeah, I, I find I keep asking myself like, what will become what will become of me? Like, even though yeah, it's like, me too. I, I even mean, though I not quite that way, but. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what were you going to say, uh, me, even though? Uh, even though I know that, like, none of it is real. <sighs> what do you mean? I mean, yeah, like, you read about things like that on the news, but it doesn't like, really happen. Oh, I know. It's just, I was thinking about how all the times I talk to people about anxiety, and they're just like, well, don't worry about it. I hate when people yeah, I'm like, no shit, what a brilliant idea. You think I wouldn't have done that if it worked? Morons. Yes. <laughs> uh, though bearing in mind, it's usually my grandma who tells me that. Maybe don't call her a moron then. <laughs> well, this is one of the ways we're similar. Anxiety? Uh, I guess it is. Oh, I should have noticed earlier. I, we both said we were worried we weren't smart enough for our major at least once. Not great, is it? Oh, more reasonable for you than the guy in like, the easiest of all majors. You should go easier on yourself. Still, I'd rather not worry that I'm too dumb for my degree or too much of a troublemaker. Or, or... Hey, you know, anyone who says that can go jump off a cliff. <laughs> you can be teaching that like neutron star stuff. I think thinking you're defective is the only defect that will hold you back. Hmm. That's really profound. Thanks. I actually.
actually do feel a lot better. You're welcome. Uh, I have apparently uh, some kind of talent for turning bad things into philosophically uplifting things. Oh yeah? What's another example? Oh well, this is going to get super personal again, uh, but... Hit me. When I was a teenager, and I had my growth spurt, it was hard. Uh, I didn't want to be tall. Uh, I wanted to be a kid who, who would be able to like, hide under things and sneak around. There was a reason my D&D &D character was 5'4". I, I hated being taller than all my friends. And then one day, I, I realized how I was reading all these stories where all the heroes are like, majestic and tall. They, they might not fit through the escape pipe, but it's okay, because someone has to stay behind and seal the entrance and find another way out. But, and if it fits that person who should be doing it, who is strong enough and tall enough and to do it. I decided that like, maybe it was my destiny to be that person. So yeah. I wish I'd known you last year. I would have benefited a lot. How so? Well, it's been a long time since I've had any friends who were grounded. Go on. Because ever since, although grade 12 all, and all of this year, my friends have just kind of been nothing. They don't want to help. They just want to hear about how you fixed it for yourself. They don't want to hear about unsolvable problems like anxiety or how your douchebag of a professor offered you an A plus if you slept with him. They don't want to talk about anything real. Because if we did, we'd, they'd be admitting that their shitty lives are real. And that's only one step from realizing that it's their fault. You need better friends. Tom sits next to her. April's backpack slides through the floor with a clunk. Tom reaches over and stabs it up. They're okay. They're nice and stuff, but we're all scrubbing ourselves so far down for the rest of the group that there's nothing real left. I forgot what genuine felt like. I forgot that things like neutron stars are interesting. I'm just frustrated right now because I forgot that conversations like that, this one were a thing. I, I used to know that before, but I have you, you now. You know. I have, I, you I have, have me. You. Jinx. <laughs> so, uh, high school. I had a friend I could talk about that stuff with. She died. Oh. Her name was Eden. We are entering April's memory palace. While still telling the story, April becomes Eden, lying on one or more desks like they are a bed. Tom crosses to April, being her slash a bystander in the scene, acting out her interactions with Eden. You can't believe how smart she was. And how poetic. And she was the bravest person I've ever met. For the first few days after she got diagnosed, we didn't know what to do. So we spent a lot of time answering messages from her relatives, which was never a good idea. People would tell her that she was fearless. And she would just respond, are you serious? I'm fucking terrified. She was so open about it. But I don't think she was afraid of what came after death. She was just afraid that she would slip away without a chance to say goodbye. You wouldn't believe what it became like to be her friend. I wasn't just there for her. I was a service center for everyone who wanted to know her. And I was the center of the crosshairs for about 100,000 people who all decided it was up to them to figure out if I was being good enough. 
supportive friends. The relatives used to tell me things like, <sighs> and as awful as it could be to be around her, sometimes not being around her was actually worse. about before when you said that you didn't know what would happen if we took this out there? The way people scrutinize my friendships. There was a hot minute there where we thought she was going to make it. And I had to watch as the chemo ripped her to pieces just so that an infection could pop up. Right? When it was all supposed to be over, and you just see the rough hole. I always wondered if she might have lived longer or better if she hadn't volunteered to let the doctors make her that sick, or if she had been able to fight it off if we hadn't put so much energy into that fish adore you video. She loved this game. Uh, to the moon, she made me play it with her for hours the last week, telling me what to do because she didn't have the energy to push the button. And she had me paint this ginormous banner with a quote on it in her hospital room. And it, it wasn't very good, but she grinned like anything when we put it up. What do you think they really are? Stars, I mean. I've never told anyone, but I think I've always thought that they were lighthouses. Billions of lighthouses stuck at the far end of the galaxy. Wow. The death wasn't exactly a shock in the end, and I did get to say goodbye. How do you walk away from someone, knowing you're not going to ever see them alive again? But what I wasn't expecting was the appalling loneliness that came in the moment that grief was able to wear away just a little. To protect myself, I started hanging out with people who I guess I never should have cared about to begin with. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'll never forget her, but it's okay. I'm glad she's not suffering anymore. So is that how you got into space? Astrophysics? Bet your yeah. ass. Though that's not the only reason. N not anymore. I discovered that I actually was passionate about it. Well, I can tell. <laughs> can I ask? Uh, I think we've sort of gotten past the point of barrier, so sure. Did your professor really offer you an A plus if you slept with him? Uh, yeah, that's awful. It was even more awful in person. Oh, we don't have to talk about it. No, if you should have seen the email he sent me. You always look so cute sitting there in the third row. Oh, you made me want to peel my skin off so that he wouldn't recognize me. Oh my god, what, what did you do? I recorded it. They tell me they're investigating him. Oh, good for you. <laughs> he totally fucked up his life. He was a good teacher up until that point. So what? He might have thought you were cute or whatever, but like the difference between thinking that and actually sending you an email, like 
How do you get from that thought to that prolonged action of typing those awful words out? I, I mean, seriously. Like, so who asked someone out via email? Like, how sleazy is that? It wasn't very romantic. Is that the end of the story? Almost. We got our marks back for that class about a week ago. I never found out, and I didn't really want to ask if they got someone else to do the final grade, since they were investigating him and everything. Do you know what I got? A plus. Yep. Uh. Thanks. What does that make it even worse? I don't know. Anything like that ever happened to you? No, uh, thank goodness. Um, anything that just makes you feel horrible about who you are? Well, uh, please. I don't want to accidentally belittle what happened to you. And you won't. Also, it's not really related. Uh, this is what happened between you and Holly, isn't it? Holly was someone who had this like, incredible energy. She had a beautiful smile, a great sense of humor. She had a scar on her cheek with this amazing story attached to it. She loved swimming, she played percussion in band. She had this, this easy amusement and grace which with it. She experienced the world. But she was a flawed person, but to me, she was perfect. Aww. Well, I loved her, but I didn't want to date her. But I, but I didn't want to know her. And she was weirdly hard to get to know. Like, she didn't talk a lot. And I just think that's because she didn't really have any friends. And so she was just someone on the edge of my radar until the orange soda incident. Oh, this is going to be good. And so there's this, this hot and popular girl, Allison, who's kind of, uh, you know the type. Oh, God, how I do. Okay, she, she had spent some time bullying both Holly and me in past years. So neither of us liked her. But then, on the third day of school, grade 12, her family won the lottery and and retired to the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, wait, seriously? Yeah, 100%. Her <sighs> dad won, I don't know how many millions, invested wisely, and boom, they were off to the Caribbean. And so uh, on the day of this orange soda incident, um, something like four minutes before the bell, there's this loud music from the hall. It, so of course, we all went to see. It, it was Allison. <laughs> parading herself through the school in a bikini and a sombrero and sipping something out of a subway cup like while her followers waved Bermuda flags and sang Unbreak My Heart by Tony, uh, Tony Braxton and at the top of their voices. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, so we're standing there watching this thing happen. <laughs> and Holly looks at me with like the spark dancing in her eye and she says, What the f fuck is happening right now? I have no idea. This is the most this I've ever seen. And it was right at that moment that Allison, right in front of us, attempted to do a spin on her heel. And the cap came off her drink, and she launched the entire thing <laughs> right at us. We both got soaked in what turned out to be orange soda. And so instead of stopping and apologizing like a normal person, she just punches her fist in the air and screams, NERD BULLSEYE! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and, and that's how we became friends. <laughs> we spent this hour together sponging our faces off and digging through the lost and found for dry clothes and laughing about how ridiculous it all was. And then we spent, started spending time together. I invited her to join our D&D group too, and she was really into it. We actually like, had a great year. And I was actually getting to know her. I'm waiting for this to go dark side. Um, yeah, flash forward right to the night of graduation. Six months ago. Oh no. 
Polly was dating this guy right then, Richard. He was not a good person. He was fine most of the time, but you guys tell he was a little mean, a little sketchy. Polly knew it. The last time we had coffee before grad, she told me she was going to break up with him once she found the right moment. Oh, you know, I, I know where this is going. Yeah, so, night of graduation, he got amazingly drunk and phoned her to come pick him up at four in the morning. Which she did, because she's a nice person. And after she got him home, she told him they were done. And he got livid and stabbed her in the stomach with a kitchen knife. Oh, shit! Yeah, and then, because it was Richard, he just wandered upstairs to just endlessly throw up. And while he was doing that, she called me. Like, people just don't do the smartest things while they're panicking. Could have called 911? No, but she called me. After she called me, uh, no, uh, I slept through it. Oh. I put Do Not Disturb on that night. So I missed the call and woke up to the most terrifying, heartbreaking voicemail you ever heard in your life. She did call 911. And the police and the ambulance came and took her to the hospital and did surgery and so on. She was like actually fine, she doesn't leave. But I was so ashamed that I had missed that phone call, like the most important thing ever, that, that I couldn't figure out how to talk to her. I, I sent her a text or something saying, I'm so sorry that happened to you, but I never went to see her in the hospital. And I never really talked to her after that. I felt so bad that I just had, hadn't been able to help her when she needed it the most. And I didn't know how to face her anymore. I just let my, let my shame eat away at me. I ate it with the summer in silence until it was September and I came here. We didn't, we didn't see each other over Christmas and I never reached out to her. And every time she reached out to me, I just deflected. Now, now here we fucking are. Wow. I'm a horrible person. No, you, you are not. Okay, but how? Uh, well, yes. I just, I mean, what, what you did was kind of shitty. You weren't the one who stabbed her. Yeah, you should have gone to see her in the hospital, but honestly, I get it. It was really hard for me to go see Eden the first few times when she was sick in the hospital. Every time I went, some new horrible thing had happened to her, and I hadn't been there. But I got through it. Got really comfortable with that. So, no, I don't think you're a horrible person. Gotta love the metaphor. What? Uh, April stamped Tom's backpack up firmly. Remember when we said this was how it, our year was going? It was like the first thing you said to me. You gotta keep standing them up, no matter how many times they fall down. Well, thank you for standing up mine.
screwed mine up earlier. So we're even. So what now? You gotta fix it, man. Call her and explain yourself. Apologize, she'll understand. The longer you wait, the harder it'll be for her to understand. I, I haven't already waited too long. I don't think so. I forgive you if that's how we left things. Okay. If I were you, I would go home, eat something, Maybe take a shower, definitely take a breath, and do it. Okay. I'm gonna do it. It's getting close to three. Ickle, what if she's angry at me? She won't be. Promise you'll buy her an orange soda as soon as you're back in town, and it'll be fine. Okay, yeah, I will. Uh, well, in that case, I'm gonna go try and figure this out. Okay, uh, I'll see you again soon? Yeah, I mean, on Wednesday, when we have class again. Uh, right, uh, but uh, message me how it goes with Polly. I will. They move towards the door. Uh, do you wanna hang out sometime before then, tomorrow night? Like, maybe? Uh, yeah. We'll figure it out. We will. Uh, chocolate. Oh, uh. April takes off her backpack and puts it down and leans it against the desk. She grabs the chocolate bar and returns to her backpack. It has not slid to the floor. 